Yo, Elliot, what are your thoughts on building generational wealth? Do you consider this as you build your empire? Also wanted to thank you for your last answer for me about whether I should go with massage or personal training. I'm pulling away from training clients, sticking with growing the massage business even more. Making the final decision has made my thought process moving forward much clearer. Thank you. So as to your question about building generational wealth, I'm not the best guy to go to for this. I'm not building generational wealth. I, I, I don't think of it that way. Number one, I don't trust the monetary system in this day and age right now. I do not trust that the dollar is going to be valuable over the course of the next, you know, between now and 2030. I don't want to store up my grains for it to be eaten by moths and and, ro and rats, right? You know, if you use that analogy. I don't think that it's, I don't think it's worth it piling up money in hopes that it will improve the value of my children's lives. I don't. So when you say generational wealth in terms of like money, I might, and I haven't yet, buy some gold to store away somewhere because it retains its value. But even that to me, and I could be wrong. I'm just telling you, I'm just telling you the way I am, guys. I'm a, you know, and I, again, I could be wrong. Maybe someone could school me on this if I was willing to listen, but I don't really care. I don't know, it's just the way I am. Um, uh, you know, I'm not the type to store up grains in the silo, right? Because you learned that from Jesus. He said, there's a story about this guy. I'm going to give you a Jesus parable. And this is how most people live. He says, uh, there's a farmer, right? And he had a really good harvest. He's like, wow, this is the, God bless me with a tremendous harvest. Just think about like if you have a good year in business. Wow, all this money is just landed on my lap. What am I going to do? And so Jesus talks about how he says, well, I'm going to store it up in silos. So he bought, he started building silos and he's storing all his good stuff in there. He's like, well, I'm going to store up all my stuff. The last day that he was storing up all his stuff, say he's got like three silos full he, and he's thinking to himself, wow, generational wealth. I will have this for years and I can just keep stacking on this and I'm going to be good forever, right? That's what he's thinking. When you say generational wealth, that's what people are thinking. They're thinking, oh, my kids will never have to work. First of all, that's a bad idea. I want my kids to work. <laughs> I want my kids to earn their way. You ever notice, you ever see these families where the parents are, or the father is very successful, but then the kids are crackheads because generational wealth, it, it, that's what generational wealth does. It destroys generations. Not all, right? But some. And so there's no guarantee that's going to help anybody. So Jesus is talking about this dude who stores up all his grains. And then guess what happens that night? He dies. He dies. <laughs> You're dead now. What you going to do with all that generational wealth, bro? So Jesus in his, in his wisdom is trying to relay the point. Don't store up your grains here, guys. Don't store it up. He says, store up your grains, store up in heaven. What does that mean, right? And this is something that a little different between Catholics and Protestants, right? But the idea that there are merits for doing good things. You, you, you store up your treasures in heaven by donating that, that extra money, right? I donate. I donate a couple thousand dollars a month, right? I could be storing up that money. A couple thousand dollars a month I give to charities. There's one charity, St. Vincent of DePaul. I give to them uh, and I give to them because they help people who have recently become homeless get back on their feet. And I don't want to say it's a fear of mine, but the one thing that like, because I have a family and have always like, I've worked because I want my family to have a home. I just didn't want my family to be homeless. And so that was the, the greatest gift, physical gift that I wanted to give my family is what you see me in right now, which is our home on this land. Let me talk a little bit about that in a moment. But so I have 42 acres and I didn't buy this for me. What do I need 42 acres for in this big house? I don't. That was the gift to, to my children. Where am I going with this? Um, but I, so with, 
my extra money, I give it to charity, right? There, the charity is a supernatural virtue. It's a, it's, a nat- it's a natural and supernatural virtue. God demands it of us. He says, be charitable to one another, right? And so I give, I give money to this organization for, you know, like, maybe I'm superstitious, but like if one day I become homeless, at least God remembers, hey, Elliot, you helped a lot of homeless people by giving, you know, a thousand plus dollars a month to this organization. And I just, I have it on auto, auto. It just goes out of my account. I think nothing of it until I look at my bank statement. I'm like, whoa, that, that was, where did all that money go? Oh, good. So anyway, and, and then of, of, I tithe to the church. So I could take that money and I could build up generational wealth. But instead, the way I see it, I'm building up graces for my family. I'm building up grace for my family by being charitable. My children know that I'm charitable. My children hopefully will be charitable, right? I teach them about being charitable, right? So the generational wealth is in, is in, is in grace, right? That's what Jesus was basically asserting about this man who store, stored up all his grains. He's like, he don't, he said, and think about the difference. He says, don't store it up in barns where, you know, Rats can come and eat it. I think he says something like that, right? He says, don't store it where rats can come and eat it. You know where rats can't get to? You know where moths can't get to? Mold can't get to? Robbers can't come and steal? Grace. Grace. Heavenly graces, right? And I got to say that my life, and it's so strange because it's, it's my father's life has been this way too. And so I think there's generational, I'm convinced that I'm living in a generational grace that my father received. I don't know how my father received it or why he deserved it, but my dad's a really good man and his, none of his siblings have this grace. My dad has the greatest life. In fact, I wanted to talk about this land. A part of the grace that I wanted to provide generationally was a place for my parents to live. My dad's ready to retire. My dad's been working his fingers to the bone, fixing cars. He's over 70 years now. And so in order to uh, uh, provide generational wealth, right? It's backwards, gener- it's retro generational. I'm offering retro generational wealth because of the graces that have come to me in my life, I can, and my dad, he gets the benefit. He benefited me with his graces and now I give his graces back to him. I say my dad, but I mean my mom and my dad, both my parents, right? It's just that my dad's the one that's still working. So to me, that's what I'm building. I'm building retro generational wealth, right? I have resources. I have graces. God has, God has given me so, and here's another thing that my, this is something my mom says. She says, God takes care of fools and babies. And I'm not a baby. God takes care of fools and babies. God offers certain graces to certain people. And I can tell you, I'm a fool because I, I don't, I'm not building worldly generational wealth. And I know I'm a fool for not doing so, right? Because my accountant will tell me, my investor, you know, I have uh, these like uh, financial advisors. My financial advisor basically fired me. He was like, Elliot doesn't want to do anything. I'm like, yeah, I don't want to do anything. Well, I'm going to put it in there. You know what I do with my money? I buy a generator, right? Buy cattle, right? I spent $5,000 on, on an orchard, right? I'm spending all my money to to, to, to build up, to take care of what I got right here. But then again, you know, the richest man in Babylon, maybe that's why they call it the richest man in Babylon. You know, there's these, these stories about like, hey, you have to learn and all the success gurus. This is like the one thing that I failed to do. And I remember Brian Tracy saying, if you can't save the great, the seeds of greatness, greatness aren't you, aren't in you. And I do save, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me like back up for a moment. It's not that I don't save any money. I do save money. But I follow a plan of saving, which means, and the plan that I follow is Dave Ramsey's. Just look up Dave Ramsey's uh, financial steps. Um, I have a year's worth of emergency funds, right? That's reasonable. It's reasonable to have emergency funds. I don't even know if it's a year's worth. Might keep me, you know, might keep me alive for six months. But in case of something, right? Not because I'm going to pass on all this wealth to my children. I don't want to pass any wealth to my children. I want to pass graces on to my children. That's why 
you know, I do the things that I do with them. Right? I want to pass grace. I want to pass wisdom onto my children, right? I want to pass my well-formed, virtuous, protected daughter onto a well-formed, righteous, religious man. To me, that's an inheritance. That's an inheritance. Marriage, a good marriage and family is an inheritance, right? Not money. Think about all these people who their parents, they, they save up all this generational wealth and the kids end up having screwed up lives. Can't keep a marriage, can't keep their family together, can't keep a job, in and out of jail, using drugs. Why? Because of all the money. In fact, there's a guy in our program right now and I've spoken with him a couple of times and he's struggling. I know he's struggling because I tell him what to do and I know he's not listening to me. He's, he's suffering. Whose grandmother died, grandparents died, left a ton of money for his parents. His parents are not doing well. They've got all kinds of sins and they've got all kinds of wrong ways of thinking and being. And now he is, he's obese. He can't keep a job. He's struggling in his life. And I told him, and he agrees. I said, you're living with blood money. You have cursed wealth because the wealth, I don't know where your grandparents got it from. I don't know, you know, that I don't even know, but I do know that it was passed on to your parents and it came with a curse. And sometimes it's just the wealth itself that's a curse because now I don't need to do anything. I can squander. I could be slothful. I can be, and he even, and I hope I'm not blowing him up here, but I haven't used his name. He even said, I can't keep a job because I know I don't need it. Right? He, not only that, he can't form the character of someone that would keep a job, right? Because sometimes the job is not about the job. The job is about, hey, you becoming the type of person that can handle this job. He doesn't even have the character because he, he's dismissive and arrogant towards the people he works for. And he knows he's wrong, but he can't, he can't stop himself. I told him, reject the money. Don't take that money. Let your parents put it in, in a bank account somewhere where you can't touch it for 20 years or something like that. Just put it in, one, in a CD account or something. But I'm telling you that that money is making your life bad. He knows. And you guys who have been here with me for the past couple of months, you've probably seen him on some of our calls. I ain't giving my children nothing. When I die, if I have any money left over, it won't be much. I'll tell you that. It won't be much because I'm not storing up the grains. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm doing stuff with it, right? Anyway, you know what I want to buy too? I want to buy night vision goggles, right? That's like $10,000. <laughs> Probably not going to get it. Night vision goggles. Why? Because... If we come under attack, now, this is just my neurosis. I'm not telling you guys what to do. <laughs> if we come under attack, the first thing that's going to go down is the electrical grid. That's the first thing that's going to go down if Russia attacks us with one of their hypersonic missiles into the atmosphere and blows uh, you know, an EMP hole in the atmosphere. The first thing that's going to go down is our grid. I mean, the entire country could go down, but you know, maybe a portion of it. I live out here in a country we don't have no lights. The whole world will have no lights. I want to be able to have night. I want to get those white phosphorus night vision gla glasses, goggles. I'll give that as an inheritance. I'll give that as an inheritance to my kids. I want to be able to buy this land. I, it's a mortgage. It's mortgaged. I want to own this outright so that my children, this is just my dream. It doesn't, you know, you, as parents, we dream, but a parent, you know, children can do what they want to do. Just like I got my father coming to live here. We got a little house in the back. I want to be able to divide this up and put little houses and like, Hey, to my children, you guys don't have to go out, especially in this world, as it's becoming weirder and weirder, you don't have to go out there and struggle. I don't want my children to go away. Uh, maybe that I know I'm old school and some people will say I'm toxic because of that, because people are, they're toxic, but I don't like this idea. I'm not sending my daughters off to college. That's another waste of money too. That's another dumb waste of money. I can't imagine. I was into a guy yesterday. I was with my daughter at the soccer game and he's like all proud of his daughter going off to college next year. I was like, I can't, I could not imagine sending my daughter off to college like that. First of all, paying that big ass bill. But second of all, those universities destroy 
your daughters. Destroys everybody. What do you do to destroy for her to get what? Some BS degree in women's studies or something like that? So anyway, I do things a little bit differently. I think a little bit differently. Don't mean I'm right, but I'm just telling you what I think, dude. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.